So today we've come to Blackfriars Lane and we're going to have a little walk to look at a very important pub which has been around for quite a long time now. Um, it's been rebuilt but it stands where there was a very old friary and I could try and tell you the story but instead we're going to go and read the plaque because that would do a better job than I will. This building over here I remember I was actually working on for a demolition job, absolutely detested it. I can't advise enough. Don't get involved in demolition if you can avoid it. Out with me. This, like many parts of London, is a hugely famous area. To the left, as we approach the corner, you'll see Blackfriars Bridge. And in the distance, you can see the Oxo building. The OXO building being special because years ago it was illegal to advertise on the Thames. So the OXO company, OXO Cubes, actually built the logo into their building, which is very crafty. Bet you didn't know that one, did you, Al? Not really. No, I bet you didn't. And this is our pub, look. See? Look, come here, look. Look, 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 look come here. It is. See all the tiling? It's like it's a mosaic, a yeah, a mosaic style tiling here. Guy is holding an four, right? Yeah. There's Blackfriars Bridge, and if you was to walk down that road, you'd head towards Westminster. Londoners, you'll know where you are, but if not, welcome. So, come all the way back here for me, cameraman, and then have a look upwards at this fascinating building, which has actually been covered by quite a few people. Covering this pub isn't actually unique, but it would be silly of us not to do it because it's so wonderful. Get, get all this while we're walking up to it. Unfortunately, pubs like this are not being rebuilt just about preserved, really. Look all up here, look, look. I love the windows, the old fashioned windows with the, with the old fashioned, um, you see that, that Victorian style, where you can raise the window. These are a bit precarious, these plant pots. Anyway, let's have a read. You can do the honors this time. Hello crowd, right, back, camera's there, read this for me. Writing's a bit small, so let's have a gander. This Art Nouveau, <laughs> Nicholson's estimated 1873, the Black Friar. This Art Nouveau masterpiece was built in 1905 on the site of a former Dominican friary, which existed from 1279 to 1539, following the 260 years of the Dominican friars. The site became the Parliament Chamber of the Monastery. It is believed that Emperor Charles V, the Papal Magistrate and Henry VIII's court sat on this very site during the dissolution of Henry VIII's marriage to Catherine of Aragon in 1532. The Black Friar has been a favorite watering hole for many since the Merry Monks first settled on this site. Its unusual shape is due to the fact that all the surrounding buildings have long since been demolished, taking with them the small alleyways that were once the only access to the pub. This wonderful pub was due for demolition in the 60s, but the public outcry led by Sir John Betjeman, uh, Betjeman and Lady Dartmouth saved the building. May the deity bless their souls. If one exists. Before we have a look at the cozy. door, and you can see there's a couple of cannons uh, out here as well. Work up there as well Just before the we do, Al. Yeah. What, the, the tiling? The sculpture work up there is Oh, the glorious. sculptures, yeah. yeah. Very wholesome. Bet it costs an arm and a leg. So it's basically a podgy man slicing into a bag of flour. But that'll be a fryer. Aye. In reference to its historical accuracy. Aye. Dominican headquarters. And do you remember what there. I was telling you about the cannons behind us? Aye. 
So all across the city are different sized cannons and here we have some more. There's so much room for historical interest in London, it's absolutely absurd. So, but come back for me, cameraman, and we'll have a little nice look. Yeah. Come here, Al. with the city in the background and the walls. I wonder how much each of these features adds to the cost and value of the building in general. Mm. Well, you see, Al, what we were talking about the other day, you see the lion there and the fish. Aye. You see it? Yes. Fascinating. Yeah. Very wholesome. Also, the door is very welcoming. Mm. Well, I also love this old-fashioned cellar. Before we close up on the outside, I get a, get a close up on this for the uh, so people know we didn't just make it up as we were going along. But I love this old-fashioned cellar, and I, I, I try and pick up whenever I see an old pub, they're still using the old cellars in, mm. in the same fashion. And you can see the underground level still marked out here by what could have been little windows years ago, but they don't make them like this anymore. Basically, this is a locale whereby the clerisy and the intelligentsia would be able to plan, plot and scheme what was best for the public at the time. Or what they felt was best for the public. Aye. Yeah. Yeah. Because let's have it right. Theism, if you was a religious character, they're so rude. If you was a religious character, then you had a lot of power. You know, nowadays it's, it's not the same, but... Yes, you had the ability to sculpt the morality and social consciousness of the nation at the time because everyone went to church and they could thus be instructed as people in this here building would uh, deem fit after drinking and enjoying themselves. Church was the, the internet. Yes, yeah. the historical importance of this building is considerable because it acted as a beacon hive mind of consciousness at the time whereby the clerisy had an opportunity to speak with the mercantile class here and plot the future of the citizenry. And also... That is the historical and cultural importance of this here domain, the Blackfriars pub. Some of the biggest family names and organisations to exist have their offices here, the other side of that building, and just the other side of this building. So the conversations that would go on in here would be beyond interesting and could shape the lives of the people in London and, dare I say, England or even the world depending on who you was. Anyway. The Blackfriar, 174 Queen Victoria Street, London, Greater London, EC4B, 4EG. The Blackfriar is a Grade 2 listed public house on Queen Victoria Street in Blackfriars, London. The Blackfriar was built in 1875 on the site of a Dominican friary. The building was designed by architect Herbert Fuller Clark, and artist Henry Poole. Remodelled in about 1905 by the same architect, Herbert Fuller Clark, today you'll still find Poole's original Jolly Friars around the pub, in the form of sculptures, mosaics, and reliefs, which explains their similar resemblance and craftsmanship. The Blackfriars pub is a triangular building on Queen Victoria Street. The outside of the pub is a narrow triangular shaped four-story building on the corner of a street. The large green and gold mosaic number 174 is printed above the doorway, and above that is the plinth that the Blackfriar rests on. Above this is a yellow clock that is said to read 5 to 7. The interior of the pub is decorated with statues and carvings of cherubs, milkmaids, fawns, and other figures. The friar says that people have been working on the interior and that the repairs are greatly needed. In a small alcove, the ceiling is decorated with gold checkered mosaic chips. Mirrors are also put up on the insides of the alcove archway. In the 1960s, the pub was scheduled to be demolished. Fortunately, however, for us, the movement of protest against its demolition, led by poet Sir John Betzeman, saved it from this fate and preserved its history for us and future generations.
as a former Catholic monastery site locale, they possessed a deed to the production of alcohol as a brewery. This particular pub is an homage to the Blackfriars Inn that was previously attached to the Catholic monastery that once stood there but has since been completely demolished. We are fortunate in excess to have this almighty testament to Western heritage, art, and architecture survive. Many surrounding buildings have been demolished or disappeared. Most significantly, the statue of Queen Victoria at 174 Queen Victoria Street, London, Greater London, EC4B 4EG. This has been demolished or removed for unknown reasons. In addition, the prevalence, historicity, and wholesomeness of Christian art and architecture within the interior is, without exaggeration, fascinating. It is on the campaign for Real Ale's national inventory of pub interiors for good reason. Saints, thought leaders, clerics, intelligentsia, and the foremost decision-makers of the then-society and the social contract authors, all such characters, walk through drank, convened, and deliberated right here, though not necessarily in that order.